Hi everyone, it's Karen here. Welcome to another video with me. And today I'm going to share with you how I created this card, which might lend itself to anniversary, the man in your life, or just to say hi. I'm using three stamps. I've got the birds, I've got the pheasant, the forest scene, which is one stamp. Look at all the, the trees all together in one stamp. So that's fabulous. All of these are from Lavinia. I'm using three colours in Distress Oxides. I've got Blueprint Sketch, Mowed Lawn, Rustic Wilderness. I'm using my blending brushes to blend with. I'm going to use Kitchen Towel for the clouds. And then for the hills and the hillside, I'm going to use these hill masks. There's four in this set. You can use that one that way or that way. That one's a bit flatter, but then these are my two favourites. I've got this lovely undulating hillside here. And then this one, which peaks, mountains, or you can just use any piece of it. So I'm going to show you how I use those in a second. So what I started with card size wise, I'm going to use magnetic sheet with an A4 sheet of card that I just cut in half. And then we will cut it down to size in a moment. What I landed up with was 14 centimetres by 13 centimetres. So this stencil that I'm using here is from Sweet Poppy Stencils. It's the Circle Aperture Stencil. That's why I'm using my magnetic sheet underneath it. It just clips on and gives me this lovely frame in which we're going to work. So we're going to do the sky first, starting with my blueprint sketch. Piece of kitchen towel. You may well have seen me do this in a couple of my videos before. I want to just say that it wasn't my idea, honestly. I watched a very talented man called Kevin Nakagawa and that's where I got the idea from. Now, depending on the type of kitchen towel you're using, who would have thought that could be so technical? <laughs> but if you're using a very thick one, I tend to hold it both edges. If you're using a thinner one, then you can tear it. What you want is a bit of an undulating edge. That's going to create our nice fluffy clouds. So I'm inking up my blending sponge. I've got a piece of rough paper here as well. And I'm just going to gently brush the card with my blending sponge. That's going to create my clouds. Doesn't that look fabulous? That's fluffy. So I'm starting on the kitchen towel and just flicking my brush onto the white card. It's fine if you've got some of these frayed bits because that's what's going to give us the wispiness in our clouds. And you can see I'm orienting the kitchen towel in different ways. And I'm going to go one more before we start. The hills. So you're going to go about halfway down this stencil and then I'm going to pick up mowed lawn. Still with my kitchen towel, my first layer of my undulating hills, I'm going to use the kitchen towel. Then I'm going to switch to the hill masks. So I'm just going to get the horizon if you like. it up a bit so you can see each time I start on the kitchen towel and I just flick it off
and I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom still with my mowed lawn there we are so I've just got a bit of texture in the bottom then I'm going to take my hill mask and my darker green that's rustic wilderness is one I've chosen and you can see each time I dab into the ink I tap it off onto my side piece of paper here so that I don't get any large kind of blobby bits that's a technical term by the way did you know that <laughs> blobby bits onto my card I'm then going to take the other hill mask. That just gives us a, a, a bit more variety. Look, isn't that gorgeous? And you see each time I move it so that the hills don't land up in the same place. Because your rolling hillside never does, does it? I'm going to move it along. There we go. We'll get this lovely one in the middle here. Fabulous. Now, I don't have a very definite horizon there. So I'm just going to go back in with my mowed lawn. Because the lighter colour, where the light shines, you want to have a bit more of the lighter colour. It's better. Now to create our frame around the whole card, mode lawn, and I'm just gonna flick off the edge of the stencil into my card, and that's gonna give us a lovely frame around our whole card. It will also fill in some of the white bits that I create and I had landed up with in my heels, but I don't want to colour them all in if you like, because as the light catches them, you'll get lighter bits and darker bits. And now I'm just going to go back in with my blueprint sketch and frame the top part of the card. Oh, that's a bit dark, fortunately. That's where the trees are going to go happening here. That's better. As I say, fortunately, that side is where the trees are going to go. So that's my tip to you. Start on this side with your blue. Now I'm going to take my forest scene it's clean and I'm just going to position it. I'm not going to stamp it yet. I'm going to position it so that I know where to stamp my pheasant. The, the forest trees go up, there's a dip in it and up and I've just put, I've just put the stamp as it goes up on the second bit. That creates a balance and you'll see when I stamp it, you'll see what I mean. I'm keeping this stencil in place just while I stamp this pheasant. Now, because the stencil is a little bit slippery, I'm starting to put my stamp down on the card and then the rest of it. Now, it's fine that it hasn't stamped right to the edge, depending on how hard you press each time. But I like this because it sort of looks like it's blending into the hillside. Probably would have liked a bit more down this, but it will work 
fine. Now it's time to remove my stencil and I'll pop my stencil in a bowl full of soapy water. Get rid of my magnetic sheet. And then I'm going to take my forest scene and ink it up with Nocturne. And there we have, I'm just going to now pop this, as I said, as the dippy bit goes up, that's what I want on the edge of my circle. Because it's such a detailed stamp, just make sure that you've got a good crisp image. Voila, nice and straight too. And then I'm going to take my birds. And for my birds, I want them flying in the sky, obviously, but a little bit out of the picture. Because what that's going to do for us is going to create a little bit of a balance that side to this side with our trees. And literally, that's it. So what I did was then I cut it down. Now, I'm going to say that you start with this half of an A4 sheet at the start and then trim it down because it'll all depend on where you oriented the trees, which trees you used, etc. So what I landed up with was 14 centimetres by 13 centimetres and then I mounted it on this black card. I hope you like it. Thanks so much for being here. I'd love to see what you make. See you again soon.